everyone welcome back to my channel for another video i hope you guys are all well we are off on another road trip heading back up that a30 and onto the m5 and this time our destination is cardiff obviously you've seen that i've just left it is quite an early start we need to be there for half past 10 so have allowed plenty of time in case we hit any morning rush traffic or anything like that obviously no ponies are going because we are having a tour around it's like an open day basically in a tour i haven't actually seen an itinerary to be honest so maybe we won't be getting a tour i'm pretty sure we will be but it's some this is something that i've actually wanted to do for probably three years well longer than that but it was in talks about being organized and then the pandemic hit and obviously social distancing and all of that would have made it quite difficult so it never never happened until today now the brand that we are going up with is actually my longest standing brand that I have worked with. Started all the way back in 2016 and it actually came about because I won a competition. So there is two, they're basically like sister brands. It is Champion and, well, it's Champion Factory Tour and the sister brand is Toggy. And I won a competition back in 2016 when that was the first time I took Sprite up to Piggy Marches, was French back then because it was before she was married and had a weekend of training. And then we were going to badminton the following May. So that was October, then the following May and they continued to support me until then and then it just rolled on and now we're in 2023 and still very very grateful to them for all the support now and over all the previous years and I think safety is something that is so so important and they have been rated Number one, no, exactly. I might find the little clip of what it is and pop it on screen because I don't want to say any of the language wrong or anything like that. I have actually ridden in champion hats all of my life and they fit my head really well. And that is probably the something that I would say is the most important. Yes, I would love you to all be riding in champion hats and to influence you guys in going out there and trying a champion hat, whether it's a fixed peak, a skull, whatever it may be, but actually, the most important part of getting a new hat is that you get it correctly fitted. Make sure that it is up to standards. There are standards if you are going to riding club, pony club, British eventing, British show jumping, all of them have standards that hats have got to meet. So that is the most important is make sure that you get it correctly fitted. It's fitted to you and that it's up to standard. But anyways, I best not ramble on. We've got to be there, like I say, for half past 10. I'm picking up Tina, and then we're going on and picking up Holly as well. She's coming up to take some photos for Champion. So I'm really excited. It was like, oh, it's another road trip. But like I say, this is something that I have wanted to do for quite a while, because I'm really intrigued. I've loved it when I've been to say like Albion and looked around at how the saddles are made. It's just nice seeing the process from the very beginning. We're right in the middle of Champions, I say in the middle, I think it's been a week and a half, but Champion are supporting the Summer of Safety campaign running by Beta and they are sharing everything there is to know about the MIPS safety system, which you might notice, you may have a MIPS hat where it's got a little yellow dot on, I believe it's on the back of the hat, but we're gonna find out all about that today. And there is currently a competition running on their Instagram page, which I will paste the link to that competition down below in the description, and you could be winning a MIPS helmet. Just looking at the time, I'd say the car's warmed up um, enough. Definitely need to be getting some fuel, but time to head on over and get Tina. I don't know why I have to go high pitch when I say that. Go get Tina. We're off to get Tina. <laughs> and the car is now full. It's a road trip. And somebody's going to see. I'm Very quickly said that they would get in the back and they fought a pillow. But I'm impressed you haven't bought a duvet. Do you that want has a blanket? Been... Yeah. I've just seen that. Oh yeah, there is. Mum has got a blanket. <laughs> yeah, Holly, that's a bit. A bit scratchy, too waterproof. That looks very nice. Yes. You had a late no, night. Late you were night. at a concert. Busy, busy time going on, you know. <laughs> yeah. Seeing the time. who? Hey? 
in the who who you don't yeah who who, who, who. who <laughs> i don't know i saw your story i can't you believe, know the song? i can't believe you don't know that song i feel really bad do you know? i need to listen to it a little bit better do you know who the who is the man should know they, they, they are they are older yeah they're a lot older oh okay Matt, yeah but i know lots of older stuff too, yeah so do you but the man stood next to me was like your parents didn't bring you up very well i was like that's my dad right there thank you and he's loving it he's the reason i've come <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> right, so next stop is definitely need some fuel because I've only got 25 miles. And then uh -oh. on to Cardiff. Oh, and a little Mackey's breakfast, I've heard somebody say. I was like, ooh, Mackey's at Columpton or um, Costa and Coffee at uh, Coffee and Croissant at Sourton? Oh, what would you get? I'm a croissant person. Oh, well, she is, she's very French, you know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right, we too. could just end up being here for ages. <laughs> Why are we on the way back home already, Em? <laughs> this way's Cornwall. That way's Cardiff. <laughs> what if we forgot? I'm glad that we allowed a load of extra time. Can we just put it that way? Because of all that. the excitement about um, getting coffee and Costa and croissants, or getting McDonald's at Clumpton. Yeah. What did we neglect that we actually need more? Well, I got us to a fuel station and the car was on five miles and then suddenly it's gone zero and the fuel station isn't open. How much hate is Emily going to get in the comments for playing chicken with the fuel gauge? <laughs> I'm more scared because it's not my car. Like I just said, if it was my Jeep, I know my Jeep would be fine. I'd be not even worried. She does it all the time. <laughs> I know. Holly, don't, Holly hasn't actually told Emily why being don't in a diesel is up, worse if you run out of fuel. I'm sure you do, don't you? Oh, well, you can do either, it says. Oh, it's worse if you run out of fuel. I know that yeah because you've got to bleed it all through and yeah it takes ages to prime it back up anyway moral of the story guys put fuel in when the light comes on not when you're on five or zero miles <laughs> a little face i'm actually have you got sweaty palms no not too bad nice no, nails oh don't oh so they look like they're better than mine are you joking Oh. oh, I only saw the fun! <laughs> Clearly, yes, I was joking! <laughs> right, wish us luck. How long have we got? Oh, what I neglected to say though was we did get to a petrol station that you had planned to go to on your five miles, didn't we? Yes. But it was shut but because was we're shut. so early in the morning, doesn't open till seven. We could have sat there for half an hour, but we're choosing to find another one which hopefully, hopefully is 24 7 or pay up pump. Why has it just gone point four? Oh, because it's telling me... I'm coasted. It. Yeah. <laughs> it was only point two till the turning, not till the oh! destination. <laughs> What's the destination? Oh, I don't know, wait. Another three minutes, hours. Seven, point seven miles. Come on, Carl, you can make that. We can do this. Whoop, whoop! Oh, oh don't oh, celebrate too early! Jesus. Oh, it's like the final <laughs> fans of Babington M celebrated too soon. <laughs> I mean, we're still coasting at the moment. What here. side am I on? I don't know. On the right. <laughs> Done. Has this car got a name? No. No, it hasn't. Thirsty. Fill her up, baby. <laughs> Thirsty. I honestly, I've never panicked so much about fuel in my life. And oh. I like to risk it quite a lot of the time, so <laughs> I'm quite used to it, but. Have you ever been on zero before? Oh, oh loads of times. <laughs> I'm Don't always in my learn gear from now. Emily, guys. It's bad for the cars. <laughs> and Dad, yeah, Dad always says he goes. Now you're using all the like mucky stuff that's at the bottom of your tank. He's like, yeah, but you always keep it a quarter. No, you're like, it's fine. It's not mucky. I use it regularly. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we have arrived at Champion headquarters. It is a massive, great building. We have just been basically chatting whilst everybody is getting all settled in. All important food is arriving behind us, which is looking very yummy, but I'm sure that's going to be a little bit later on. Um, we have got some talks. We are going to see the lab where they test the helmets. We have got a factory tour. Not quite sure in the order that that is going to be, um, but obviously we'll just take you guys along. And I'm really excited. It is all very well presented in there. Branding on point and excited to see how the day unfolds. Fun fact for Tina. The fun fact actually isn't any, anything related to Champion Equestrian Safety Bear, but it is related to the 1920s. My engagement ring is the same age as that hat. Hey! <laughs> Sorry, that wasn't at all what you were expecting, was it? Not at all. <laughs> hey, which, which is more solid, a diamond or... What is that? Cool. Cool. You wouldn't think that would give you much protection, would you? Well, they have back then, I guess. Wow. Uh, yeah, exactly. Did you just tell me it fits you? It does show me. <laughs> Sorry, Anne, that really wasn't the fun fact you were expecting, was it? <laughs> I take it goes that way round. I just saw 
1920s, and I thought, crikey, that's a lo long time. <laughs> you saw oh, that just into her eyes. <laughs> Is it that way round or the other way round? I don't know, but where's your silk? And also, you need to take that one and get piggy sign that one. That's got to be the Oh, that's better. That's so weird. That's better, yeah. Because then you've got a bit more protection, protection down the back, back, see? That's the important part, and that's where you twizzle the tightening and <laughs> tie it up nice and snug. Remember the ones that always had the bit that went over your chin? It's like, oh, yes, look! Yeah. Try that one on him. When you went to riding schools, did you have one like that? Yes. I'll be honest, this looks very much like your original hat. My original hat. Here. I actually do think I've still got it at home, so I will find it. And that one I definitely can't get on my head. Yeah, my chin strap's not tight enough. Do that and it go like... <laughs> and the fastening was just like a hook. Yeah, That's nuts, it'd be isn't tight it? tight enough that side to pull it taut. Yeah, but you think that still actually it could yeah. do undo. And that's why they've now... The evolution of safety. <laughs> and now we're into MIPS. I can't remember already what it means. Oh, don't do the dirty on me, Emily. MIPS is a multi impact protection oh, system. That's the word I was looking Champion for. Champion is renowned for protecting your head, but MIPS protects your brain. No, no, no. Woo. You've done your research. All important. <laughs> of course I did. Look, there we go. Brain protection system. It's integrated in the helmet. Low friction layer designed to reduce rotational motion transferred to the brain from angled impact of the head. Is this the armadillo? Ooh! It's because you never fall off and direct, like, right angle impact. No, oh. it's always that you're going to be a bit, never mind how well you learn to fall off, you're always going to have a bit of rotation, aren't you? Exactly. Yeah. And look, oh, look, it's our hat! It is indeed. A low friction layer within the hat allows for sliding movement of 10 to 15 mil in all directions. Yeah, I Yes, I was reading it. And not only is it inbuilt into riding helmets, it's inbuilt into ski helmets, cycling helmets. Motorcycle helmets. And cycling. And cycling. Everything. Exactly. Holly, you've got mitts in your ski helmet, haven't you? I do. You do indeed. Good girl. That's what we like to hear. Because she is a daredevil on skis. Yeah. Watch her stories from the winter. Are you coming next year? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Try and train as many people as possible and help as many people as possible understand the implications of safety in the equestrian industry. It's a sport we all love in one way or the other. I tend to just watch these days, I must admit, although I do fantasise I'll start riding again one day. Um, so without, without further ado, I'd like to hand you over to Gerrit, who's the operations director, and thank all of my team who've done an amazing job here um, at getting everything ready for you guys today. Hope you have a lovely day. John is, and his wife Bridget, they started up the business and quite, quite aptly named it Champion. Because Champion is the king of all. Yeah, it, it wins, it wins trophies, it wins prizes, etc. And we've got a heritage board downstairs. I hope that you will all take time to go and read uh, because it's got the full history of the business and how it's progressed through the years. Um, I think a credit to John that um, he's brought this business to what it is today. Um, uh, Sarah Jane and Charlotte have uh, continued the legacy and uh, uh, it keeps everybody employed uh, around the area as well. So again, I'd like to put a round of applause in for that one. Uh, dedicated the, uh, the lives really into trying to make safe products to protect not just the head, but the body as well. And, uh, you know, you'll meet, meet these uh, people as we go through and they will be quite informative of how things have, have grown, developed and um, come to what they are today. Our ethos, right, as a business. OK, I'm relatively new. I've only been here two years. Uh, but what we're trying to do um, is drive um, a culture into the business to maintain the accolades that we've got in terms of uh, quality, um, standards, continuous improvement, that kind of stuff. And, you know, first things in the hierarchy is safety for everybody. Yeah, not just for us, but for users of the product as well. Very important about um, the employees as well. So very, very uh, close to my heart. Quality, okay, we're doing a lot of work with quality um, in terms of we make sure that everything is checked, checked and double-checked because your lives are in 
our hands. Yeah, very, very important. We'll keep that going. Um, we will drive our cost down. If we drive our cost down, we can give a better experience to the end user. We can make the product cheaper, um, and we can uh, sort of develop things. We can invest more. We can put money back into the business and make more improvements in the products going forward. So very, very important for us. And delivery. Um, I know um, through the pandemic, there was a lot of trouble and delays in people getting stuff. But again, um, sorry to lay it on the team, but they all pulled together, drove things forward, and uh, you know, tried to get these safety products out to people as quick as we could. So currently made to PASS 15 and VG1. Um, some of them are also made to the latest Snell standard, which is E2021. And some of them are also made to the current American standard, F1163. Horse riding helmets are slightly weird in terms of PPE. They got the, the four standards out there. A lot of the PPE typically survives off one or two international standards. They're not all equal. They don't all cover the same thing. So this is a very brief overview. There's a, four slides here. They're slightly technical. I won't try and bog down in too much detail on them. Um, Normally what we can see here though is PASS 15 we regard as the gold standard, it's the best standard and that's for a variety of reasons. It typically carries more impacts than some of the older European and American standards. It covers aspects of design such as penetration testing which makes sure that sharp objects can't get into the helmet and hit the rider's head and it looks at more aspects of the harness design than any other standard out there. So from our perspective academically um, we are tasked with um, trying to, to make new things, uh, which is quite fun. It means that I do various bits and bobs, speak to various people, come to places like this to try and um, make it more obvious as to uh, the value that some of our work brings to society. Sometimes it happens behind closed doors, and so to bring it out um, to make it more obvious to, to people like yourselves is quite important. Um, for this project, we're trying to um, improve horse riding um, hats performance um, for the reasons that Ben's said. Uh, Champion or, or other companies uh, don't want to invest a huge amount of money into, into research because it's risky. Uh, a lot of the things that we try don't work. Um, so in essence, where we can work together with projects that have more um, likelihood of, of bringing companies such as Champion Reward, um, then that's the kind of collaborations that we normally strive to. A series of bands linking a series of tubes together, which is what we've got. And as we change the thickness of these bands and the thickness of these tubes, then we can feel that as we squash them, the mechanical performance changes of um, samples B, H and I that are floating around. Uh, again, maths, we don't want to do it by hand because there are reasons it can go wrong. Um, indeed, trying to solve it is challenging. So you plug it into a computer and it runs through these simulations for you. Um, so we have some thick walls, some thin walls, some big holes and some small holes. And we can again get the computer to plot these to see which gives us the nearest horizontal line. Horizontal lines are good lines and so we can run through these simulations and we can pick the design that gives us the best looking horizontal line. From a consumer perspective, we want our hat to be as light as possible. Ironically, the American football guys are actually after the opposite. They want the heaviest possible helmet so that you can ensure that you damage your opponent as opposed to yourself. Um, luckily, we don't all play American football, so we generally want the lightest, the most effective helmet. And so we can work on um, exactly how we deposit that foam around the volume that we've got available. Um, for me, it's, a, it's, a, it's an honor to be at MIPS that works with safety within the equestrian industry. And it's uh, delightful to be here with you today uh, that have the same goals as, as we have uh, to, bring, uh, to bring safety for, for the equestrian world. We are operating in all different kinds of helmets categories within sports and safety and so on. And uh, today we're working with approximately 150 active brands. Together they run 883 models and that sums up to almost 13 million units sold. We started 25 years ago and it's all started with a neurosurgeon and two biomechanical <coughs> engineers, engineers at the Royal Technical University in Stockholm. And today we are a plus 30 engineers, but we also have the science department and the R&D team working closely with Royal Technology University still, but also other universities around the world in the matter of helmet safety and brain injuries. We are active in all different kinds of sports, but also construction and leaf, the leaf category. 
So it's equestrian, climbing, bike, motocross, snow. So pretty much wherever it's a helmet, um, you could probably find MIPS within it. It's a safety system for helmets, and it's a low friction layer that allows the head to move inside the helmet, and therefore softening the force of certain impacts. So most helmets are good at absorb liner motion and forces due to DPS, but most helmets are less good at take care of angle impacts. And therefore we have the low friction layer. And I have a video to show how that works. If you're into any activity like biking, skiing, motor riding, horse riding, or maybe you're in the safety industry as a construction worker, you probably fall from time to time. Luckily, most falls are minor. A skinned knee, a dirty kit, but you keep going. Sometimes, however, the fall is much greater. You hit the ground hard. When you crash and hit your head on the pavement, dirt, snow, or ice, it's often with an angled impact. Most angled impacts create a rotational movement. Problem is, traditional helmets are designed and tested for straight impacts. And that's why MIPS invented the safety system and why we always test our helmets at a 45 degree angle. Got that? Got MIPS? No? Go get it. We've just started a campaign, five weeks of MIPS, um, and it's sort of tying in with the beta summer of safety, which is going on at the moment. Um, and, and really, this is our opportunity to talk as much as we can to our audience. Um, and, you know, despite the fact that we've been creating MIPS products now for, you know, five or six years, we're still finding time and time again that there are people, you know, as there are here today in the equestrian industry that just haven't taken on board the technology yet or, you know, haven't heard of it. From a marketing perspective, it really is a priority for us. So we are looking at MIPS specific POS um, that is going to be available um, and can be put up in store. So banners like you can see um, over there and on the screen. Um, we have also launched new um, MIPS um, entry level products that have a lower price. Um, to make them more accessible to people. Um, and we are also offering 10% um, off um, MIPS um, for, for a limited time only to make the product more accessible to people and to have something um, that will really grab people's attention in store. Okay, so we have had the talks oh, and we are now being called over because the tools are about to start. So obviously that was a lot of detail, a lot of science, a lot of test formulas. Admittedly, to me and you, we may not understand fully, but it is so vital to know how much these helmets are tested before obviously they are sold to us all, but before we get in trouble. It's been split into three groups so that it's just a bit more spaced out. We're off to unit one, which we'll soon find out what that entails, but I think this will kind of help go with what we've just learned in the talks because it'll be a little bit more visualised and for us who may not understand all the science and everything that goes behind it but know how important it is, I think seeing it from our own eyes will show just how powerful when they're talking about the force of like the impact and uh, we'll go and see what it's all about. I think this will be easier now to understand, won't it? It'll be like <laughs> yeah, the science definitely. a little bit goes over our head. Yeah. Well, it's all such in-depth technology, isn't it? <laughs> oh, so important. Oh, so, exactly. I'll come out to copy you. Oh, so important. Oh, just not. Um, everything is, is made in batches. So batches generally 1,600 helmets per batch, where six will go off to BSI for test every time. Um, once I've created a batch, due to um, sales history or any future forward orders we have for the bigger customers, 
each batch will have uh, the sizes, the quantities, what colour needed for that batch, and then everything is traceable throughout the factory from unit 3 down to unit 1. So, uh, Rob here to my right, he's um, drilling the XR shells. So, each, each shell has a marked um, on it the different uh, models that we do, whether it be the XR jockey right now or the uh, Focus Uniplus jockey helmet. Uh, and behind you there, Rob is platforming the peaks. So we have a back press machine. So this area is where we do all the spraying for the the sanded helmets, that's all done in this area. In the centre we've got the hydro dipping tank, so we use a hydrofoil space back to make out any pattern between flames, skulls, snakes, anything you want. So I said down unit 3, everything's created, go back to 1600s. Um, once I print off the sheets, they then go to the first half uh, production, which I'll take to an hour, which is all the prep work for the materials that I've had to go there So, on all the production sheets, it'll have um, again what colour, what size the material it has to cut. Um, it'll show the layer. How much material he has to cut, and uh, it also has a layer of what sizes of each. So, at the moment, Andrew's smooth it down there. Yeah, and I'm saying so. And another batch of, um, is it a batch of food jockey, and, and quantity he needs. So, each sleeve is cut to a certain uh, to a certain length and then it's sewn to a certain length and we get to fit uh, the liner perfect. Going for the XR harnesses for the jockey and the rider. So, Andrew, Andrew will get his blank piece of uh, material, he'll cut it out as per what the uh, production state. And then he pressed using the jigs and then to form the pattern. So we're really ready for the next stage production. So in uh, velvet cap covers which we sell as an accessory. So again they'll come through with like a batch if we have to sew. Andrew will cut the quantity, the sizes, mark all that traceability for the whole feet. Similar to the cap covers, which is all Tracy sewing, um, we have the normal covers for the, for the velvet hats. So once they're all sewn, we glue the seam down. I guess uh, we get seam down to the flat. And then again, as per the batch sheet, they will pull down a certain size uh, and colour.
that easy. Just like that. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> so like I say, that's the finish. Now again, then get inspected and uh, place it on the line, ready for the next stage where we'll have to put the liner in, put a button on it as well, and then ready for the stage, which will be the final process. Data manufacturer, um, which is in every hat that we send out. So that be, that's it, ready for steaming. So the hat is steaming straight to the other to the hat, get any squeeze to the other. our MIP system. So it's added on, we have obviously put a removable liner, crown pad liner in there, we have obviously a sleeve as well. So that's it. You can feel this is just a little So they're all put onto a lay and they're all printed off into a pattern which is for the, the sculpt. So that is a front piece and this is all cut by hand. Okay, so all of the material is laid up, the pattern is put over the top, and then it's all cut by hand. So this is the foam that's within the TI-22. Um, as you can see, it's been cut out using the tools that we've got on the shelf there. This foam current state is flexible, but as you can see from the, the TI-22, it still hasn't got the grooves. So once we've cut them out by hand, this one has already been routed, we'll be able to see the process of what it actually goes through. So this is a, a YSL um, and it's going to be cutting out the 6mm side of the foam, which will be the outside. So this gives the, the foam the finish of the decal that you can actually see when the body protected is complete. And that's the finished outcome, obviously. This is more like a vest, but it's empty, there's no foam in it. Okay. So that has got to be filled with foam and then stitched at the bottom to secure the foam in place. Here got with a, a special foot that actually goes down within the foam to stitch it in and that then secures the foam in it completely. Find it around the bottom so it's never going to come out and then it's obviously stitched through. So we've got the 10 mil at the in, inside and then 6 mil on the outside. The lines that we've just routed out which gives it the depth of the body protector, but that also gives it the actual curve that we want on the body, and it gives it full flexibility then. Whereas with a solid piece of foam, it doesn't really have that flexibility, but with all this routed out, it gives it full movement. Just humans. Yeah. <laughs> actual body, so all of that cotton that's come through from the Dirkop needs to be trimmed off. So this gets trimmed off, it's almost like a shaver, so they, they'll get shaved off and all of that cotton will come out and it'll be completely free of cotton on the outside then. All the sides then are laced up and then you've got the full finished body protector. Notice to user is attached to the body protector with all the information about how to take care of it um, and the beta level as well. Welcome for the test app. There's a few bits and bobs in here which I'll sort of gloss over now. Um, predominantly the freezer and the oven at the other end. That's to do with the conditioning. So both body protectors and helmets have to be conditioned to certain requirements before test. For the helmets, it's up to a maximum temperature of 50 degrees C and down to a minimum of minus 17. Body protectors, it's only around up to plus 30, plus 35. Um, and that's assessed by each individual committee. The reason for those is to make sure that if it works at those two extreme temperatures, it would work in between. I don't think any reason me buying a horse at minus 17. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be leaving the house at minus 17. Start with penetration rig. Every standard uses the same spike, which is this. It is three kilos of steel topped with a 60 degree spike. It's a nasty thing. 
that dropping onto your head would hurt. Um, four pass, each drop through three quarters of a metre, snail that's about a metre, the other standard dictate is around half a metre. Um, the aim of this is a simple parcel fail test. If the spike goes through the helmet and makes test with the contact block, we fail the test. As long as the spike doesn't make it, um, contact with that block underneath, we're fine. Um, another thing is nice and fancy or deep in the if it fails. So that's made a very small dent in the top of the helmet, um, which is what we like to see. So this is helmet drop rig, it's set up currently to do flat impact. How high is this one? Uh, 1.9 metres, so about as tall as I am is the drop distance. So not quite as high as somebody riding on a horse, but it gets to about the light speed. So as I said, there's two different angles, depending on the standard, depends on the mix of how many impacts in each angle we do. On the pass, we're looking at three impacts on the flat angle, one on the hazard. This is a pro plus that's been cut in half. So you can just about make it out of the back there. There's a little divot in the foam where it's taking the hazard info, and at the front, the foam sort of flattened. Normally it'd be relatively flush with the ABS. Um, that's where the impact occurred, that's the foam being used. As Pete was saying upstairs, these are single use. That foam won't ever bounce back. If I was to hit that in the same location again, we'd get a much worse result, it might even fail. This is one of the evolutions. Uh, and again, same sort of thing, but it's a bit more pronounced on the hazard. That's because it's because of a glass fiber shell that's got a slightly thinner lining in it, so it looks like more significant damage. These tested about the same, both well within the standard. The important thing to note is, apart from the fact it's cut in half, if you look at the outside surface there, Without me drawing that line on it, there's not much indication of damage. Ditto on the inside, that foam looks pristine, but it isn't. Hence why we get people to realise that if they've had a fall in the helmet, they need to throw that helmet away. If now with the first impact, that body protector should have recovered back to its pre-impact state and would be just as safe. Hence why body protectors don't need replacing after every fall. It's also got slightly different energy. The other big principle is Whereas the helmet rig measures the acceleration on the head form, which is the bit that falls with the helmet, this looks at the force being passed through the body protector into the person. So it's like, it's mimicking what would happen if you fell onto like a bar on a jump or something. It's that idea of something striking you as opposed to you striking the thing. Full on body protectors um, are a lot more complicated. So as a back protector is measured off a single measurement from your waist to your shoulder, Body protectors come from waist to waist, round, round the waist, and round the chest. Depending on those three measurements, there are then 14 control dimensions, about 14 control dimensions on a back protector, that are all based off those three measurements, and include things about the adjustability and the side of a TI-22. The reason why we have 45 sizes of TI-22 is we need that many to get the range of sizes we have from the very smallest child's one, all the way up to the largest adults because there's so much limiting the movability. For comparison, the sculpt back protector comes in 12 sizes, and that covers the same sort of range of people as the um, tr 32 does. This is currently set up, it's just done an effectiveness test, which is purely when we drop a 10 kilo weight of steel through about half a metre, does the helmet come off the headphone? It doesn't, you might notice that this headphone doesn't have any nose. If you're aware of this helmet, you might have slight injuries from being damaged in your nose. But it's to make sure that the harness is designed in such a way that when it's on your head, nice and tight, the helmet can't be pulled off your head by a fair amount of force. The other thing that PASS does and tests for is stability. So, with the helmet back in a level position, a small amount of weight is attached to this cable, but not dropped. And we have to measure how much that helmet rotates by. We're not allowed to let it slip by more than 15 mil. I don't know if it was mentioned in the MIPS talk, but MIPS looked for 10 to 15 mils of movement inside the MIPS hat for it to work properly. So our MIPS helmets, I've got a very fine balancing point between enough movement for MIPS to work properly and not so much movement that they then fail on this test. Um, it's one of the key aspects designed for. The other helmet or harness test is this one, which is the strength test. <laughs> So again, this is 10 kilos of steel, it's hanging, um, and it's going to fall onto an animal that's attached to this pole. 
that pole then yanks on the head form, which is inside the helmet and is attached only by the harness. This, this test is to make sure that when you're riding, if the helmet's going to be pulled in any way, the webbing, the harness won't snap and break, the head form's going to stay inside the head. Nice and secure. There is a maximum and minimum. That's another difference between pass and a lot of the other standards. A lot of the other standards only care about the maximum distance you move. Pass also says you have to, it has to recover by a certain amount. But the whole purpose of this test is to make sure that these helmets can withstand a huge amount of force without crushing in too much. You put a cycling helmet in this, it will shatter in half and go flying across the lab. Um, we also know from the work done by Yasmin that one of our helmets under this load reduces the load onto the bike's head by about 70%. So they do a really good job. Um, it's a vitally important test in question world because most other sports you don't have this for something for you in an accident to land. I know. You're spoiled. I mean, there's not very many people here left, but thank you all for a lovely day. Thank you. Thank you. In true Emily style. <laughs> Typical me, basically. I forgot to end the vlog yesterday. Kind of like we left up there and got on the road and then I was like, oh, I just want to get home now. And the weather, it was absolutely pelting it down with rain the whole way home but we did get home safe and sound but what a fabulous day really really enjoyed it I'll be honest the formulas and the equations in the talks went a little bit above my head like over my head it shows just how much goes in to creating the products the the hats the body protectors the back protectors the new sculpt ones that are out and it was fascinating to learn about it and obviously we've got the MIPS wanting to raise awareness of that and it's great that the MIPS the multi-impact protection system didn't know what it was <laughs> is now coming into equestrianism like it is already in other sports and that equestrians are following suit so that is fantastic and obviously be aware of like the new standards that are coming out and make sure that you guys have got your hats up to standard as well and as I said at the very beginning of this vlog the biggest thing that I can say to you guys is make sure that you get your hat correctly fitted to you so that it allows it to work exactly how it is supposed to, protecting your, your head, your chin strap, making sure that we've got the chin straps tight as well because I don't know about you, but maybe when I was younger, I perhaps didn't have it quite as tight. You saw the test yesterday of how much strength and the force that goes that it can withstand. So make sure that you have got it correctly on so that it is allowed to do its job. But it was fascinating. I really, really enjoyed it. And I was really astounded by how much of it is a manual process. I can't believe, like, each layer of the hat, the stitching that goes on around, like, your, your chin strap and all of that is all done by hand. It was incredible to look around. And I have wanted to go there, like I said, for ages and finally got to get there. And it was lovely to see all the champion team as well and how happy everybody was. Um, and how smart they were looking as well. They had set up the place, they put on lovely food and so much of it. Everyone was going home with like doggy bags. It, yeah, everything was brilliant. But I did mention at the beginning of this vlog that there is a competition that you can win one of their MIPS helmet over on their Instagram page. So I will have linked that down below in the description. Only a couple of days left to get yourself entered into that, but got to be in it to win it. It was a fabulous day. It was lovely to meet Sarah eventing with Ozzy and obviously with Holly and Tina as well. So yeah, the whole day was just really lovely and I really really enjoyed myself as I hope that you guys have too coming along if you have please do of course as always like comment and hit that all important subscribe button if you don't already and until next time I will see you all very very soon <laughs>